so Mark, you asked me how I am. Um, without understanding my true nature, that I'm an extrovert, I need people, I need dynamism, movement, I love traveling. Like, just, you know, I got into this idea, uh, and we all do because um, even permaculture, Jeff Lawton, yeah, uh, permaculture mm -hmm. teaches the, everybody, almost everybody uses fear tactics to promote their products such as in jeff lawton's mm. so there's nothing to do with like i'm not against jeff lawton i've done his course i love it and it's not just jeff lawton but it's this idea that we all need to go homesteading so mm. without understanding my true nature i left my business in 2009 uh which i was doing the day call for events which was pretty successful and moved on to the farm mm. and uh, three years later i've also built lots of stuff and uh you know if we have time i can show you the presentation but went to cal earth in california learned super adobe built uh, domes tried ponds made, made lots of mistakes even dug a, a geodesic sphere sacred geometry 2.6 wow. meters diameter sphere underneath into the ground so if the earth starts moving because it was just before 2012 you know it it's all this fear that got mm. me out that no we need to food forest gardening imported seeds from america like thousands of seeds not five two percent germinated because obviously Ooh. you don't know what you know some needs to have a a, a squirrel biting a freaking seed some, <laughs> some needs to be frozen and and stuff like some needs to be soaked some needs to be soaked in acid i don't know you know what i mean <laughs> you like i really tried and then that's why i did the permaculture course jeff lord is like yes world is coming to an end we all need to go homesteading you know and i'm like okay a community yeah yeah an eco village and i'm like checking friends who wants to come it's like mm. ah, not now not yet you know everybody so everybody wants but when you're like okay i'm buying the land let's go oh no no oh, we're yeah. ready you know that kind of story mm. so three years on the land lots of experimentation a total bankruptcy in the business and a, a robbery uh, um, on the land where my son and my ex-wife got tied up and we in the caravan a hundred meters from where, where I was wow. built, uh, basically was sent me back to Johannesburg uh, to try and lift my business back up which I couldn't for six years I tried yeah. and then eventually I just like fuck it you know <laughs> and uh, got into the whole bioarchitecture story and uh, already wrote a vision of these new types of communities but now moving away from communities and it's got to be something else because uh, and uh, I'll, I'll still share a little presentation but yeah basically and then I've since I've moved to Russia I've already moved four times two times to a village it was two two neighbors and their neighbor shot at me with a rifle tried to escape <laughs> Because in the village, in the Russian village mentality, maybe also where you are, people are living their ways, they're drinking a lot, maybe mm. you are, but villages in Russia, just like it's people who are milk, milking cows and like mm. far out. So when people come with online businesses and they're seldom uh, working out on the, in the heat of the sun, you know, th there is jealousy and stuff. So that, that's, mm. then we moved to a, a village with no neighbors, like abandoned village, renting a five-star house with thick logs and and uh, wow. eventually the, 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 the landlord said, no, you guys got to leave. I'm selling, blah, blah, blah. And in that village, I also bought uh, a piece of land, which I still have in Russia. Land is very cheap. Uh, you can mm. buy a land with a house that you can maybe renovate for $5,000. And you have wow. a standing house with a Russian uh, stove, a masonry stove hmm. uh, and, and everything. And you'll have like a hectare or two with it and uh, like... Uh, 500 fruit trees and and herbal teas to pick and and fresh water wow. uh everything for all, all for three thousand dollars wow uh, three thousand dollars was for a hectare with a house <laughs> no building codes doesn't so, get better than that yeah 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 you'd think you'd think that the dream come true but mm. the big but First of all, again, neighbors from a nearby village came, shot my dogs because they are, we just let them run. It's an abandoned village. The dogs should roam. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. so dogs got shot and uh, we moved into a flat in a nearby town because of the, we couldn't rent this house. So I was traveling back and forth, building this home. Lots of tets of flies biting me because when you're out in the nature and there's nobody around oh, no, yeah. mow, mowing the lawn, then creatures of insane uh, quantities come. So five types of tetra flies during the day, 
Um, so you're getting bitten by billions of them. And then when the sun goes down and it's like finally it's cooling down because you must remember you're in long shirts, long, mm. long track suits and everything. And then it's just the reality of homesteading, maybe in America where your eyes are all different and chilled, but there's other problems such as no mm. water. Uh, you know, here's mm -hmm. excess water, like I'm in a swamp <laughs> and mm -hmm. there is no water. You know what I mean? So it's all uh, that kind of thing. There, but there is a bigger danger to that kind of thing. And it's all very linked to what we're going to be talking about is uh, there's no people. There's no like minded people. So, uh, you know, uh, um, so eventually I nearly got mad and I uh, left for Siberia to a big community because I thought uh, I went mad because I had no people, no interactions. You know what I mean? Mm. Mad as in legs start shaking, body starts shaking. Uh, anger, depression, which you name, which I'm learning now today through this book. Um, gosh, forgot. Uh, but basically, all emotions we shouldn't name them. It's just energy trying to come out. If we say bad anger, mustn't feel that. It's right. like taking an okay. atom and trying to condense it. That's how atomic atomic bomb happens. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bad news. So anyway, shot out to Siberia. Uh, told my wife that I'm divorcing her. Then already uh, got a girl uh, there that I didn't do anything with. Uh, we just, you know, from uh, internet, she came to visit and uh, and I build a hobbit home. Everywhere I go, I build something. I build a hobbit home and I'm like, right. have like 40 hectares, these couple, this old couple, wow. that, which I also got into, maybe they're my new father and mother, you know, so there's all this other trauma bullshit and, you know, trying to replace your bad parents to good mm. parents and build a home on the land and uh, a hobbit home look the good news is they i made a course of it and uh, and it's a cool technique it was really cheap a thousand dollars in material a thousand dollars for uh, two laborers to help me and basically in, a, in two months at four hours a day we build the whole house wow. and buried it with uh, turf so that's really cool i'm sure you've seen it in my presentation or wherever mm. And uh, yeah, and then as soon as I finished building it, uh, I, oh yeah, yeah, they wouldn't let me have like a hundred square meters just where the home is. Like, no, 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 it's all communal, you know, we love each other, hold hands, all this other okay. stuff. Obviously, when it comes to leave, okay, well, we're keeping the home, it's on our land. <laughs> thankfully, they paid me the thousand dollars, but not the, and then I pushed in two months of work, so whatever. So that was a good experience and realizing that even in a big community of 5,000 people, it's a sect. A guy called himself Jesus. He's still sitting in jail. You can Google uh, <laughs> City of Dawn, Vissorion in Siberia. I mean, beautiful. They have play classes, this, and, and it's really dynamic. But somehow I just uh, just couldn't uh, manage out there, we, even in a big community, because people already have wrong beliefs that they're following the savior. savior so they're all right. about him. And they also have funny dog dogmatic beliefs, like which the one that really struck me is two of them uh, the third commandment because he claimed that he's christ right <laughs> he wrote a whole bible rewrote a bible and third commandment says listen to this a lie if it's done for the good reason is accepted by higher thing so i'm like of course you know yeah i'm like but the whole thing that you called you you said that you're jesus uh, could be that because yeah. you're saving the people <laughs> So, of course, they're like, no, 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 it's like, you know, it's something else. Like, you, when you know, like, when you tell your children about Christmas Father, you're lying, but it's for the good. Mm. They gave me, they all gave me the Christmas Father uh, story, you know. Okay. So, that was very strange. And then, and then, uh, uh, what's the other one? Ah, it doesn't matter. So, I, I, anyway, I finished the house. The day I finished the house, I left. I went back to Zoya, my wife, and, well, she's not my wife anymore, and, uh, I, you know, she accepted me, and a year and a half I lived, I bought another piece of land, and instead of the uh, Roman arch, I made a Gothic arch, taking the same technique and putting the two on, the on top of each other. The biggest mistake, I made curvy walls, because curvy walls on a on, a, on an arched straight roof, uh, some mm. parts stick out, so snow falls, melts on it, absorbs into, oh, right. absorbs into the hyper adobe, and uh, and because it's hydroscopic, that's the new word, <laughs> and, and and yeah, so anyway, so uh, lots of mistakes, and again, year and a half passed, and I, I basically started shaking again. I'm like, fuck, you know, what now? And that what now is we got this belief that. Arriving on the land, far out from everybody, maybe for some it works, but mm. 
arriving on the land far out from everybody and setting up your beautiful homestead with mm. permaculture, food forest gardening and sacred geometry, like you will cream it. You will be, you will, you'll be saved. You, you'll it's be, true. You know, when yeah. the apocalypse comes, because that's how the marketing techniques from Jeff mm. Watson, from everybody, apocalypse, mm. end of the world. Look, the wars, and you look around like, shit, the world is coming to an end. You know, if you mm -hmm. look at the news and stuff, so you're like, yeah, yeah, run, 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 run to the mm. land. And, uh, and, and it doesn't work because people need people, Mark. And without mm. people, we are, I just go mad. And we, just, we need like a few people. So why mm. cities are all pulling people towards them? 60% of the world population is, and they carry on expanding. It's because mm. the city, we have other people that we can meet up. Yes, they're shit, they're not good, but, but people want people. And when you are out in nature, you're in a traumas and wherever things that you can get away with in the city by pubs and weed and right. uh, and uh, friends and parties and theater you don't hear this inner voice traffic you know by the time mm -hmm. you get home you uh, have a spliff or, or a beer i'm not talking i mean i i don't do either but i'm just speaking uh you know yeah. and before you know it you're in bed and wake up and you you know and uh, and off you go there mm -hmm. so so where am I now is after getting these shaking, I decided I'm going to go and do a cleanse. So I did a fast. I didn't go to drugs. I just went to clean myself fast, come back. And the relationship with my wife was cold. So I'm like, mm. yeah. So I left again to Moscow, uh, did a couple of talks there on things we're going to speak now and, uh, mm. and came back and basically, yeah. So it, it's torn. It's torn. The relationship is torn. Uh, and I proposed, look, can I be here two weeks and two weeks I'm out teaching, traveling in mm. doing other things. And she's like, no, that I don't accept that. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> so that, that's a that, tough one. Mm. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, obviously a woman on the land, um, although we, we were in a good position, we bought uh, five minutes from the train station and the train takes you to St. Petersburg in an hour and a half, nice train, air condition, beautiful so it was a good situation nothing stopped me from expanding from there but right. just uh, I, I just you know when you and your, your partner are not uh you ask your wife to go for a walk with you no i don't uh want to you ask her to go to theater with you no i don't like theater mm -hmm. it's not not compatible uh, eventually mm -hmm. you know and she took 16 cats which totally binded <laughs> us to uh, you know if i'm an extrovert and i want to travel 16 cats uh, no uh, you know what i mean you can't do that <laughs> even if i take them into my off-road van as soon as you open the door <laughs> it's like poof, <laughs> you can't catch them so uh, sorry to do such a long introduction but how i I am uh two days of crying yesterday and the day before crying 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 uh mm. pain today started listening to this book uh uh consciousness it doesn't matter the, what the book says is that all emotions all uh, emotions we are energy and if we call them bad and we try to suppress them it just goes hey why are us a thousand times more so mm. you, you feel them, you let them out and you don't call them bad or good because the same emotion that's happiness is the, it comes from the same source or have it's called whatever sure. as, as a sadness and grief and anger. So, mm. so where I'm, I got to a point that we need to build new types of towns, mm -hmm. taking the best from eco villages uh, and the best from, um, Maybe I can just, whilst I'm on it, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll hand over to you. I, I won't even do, go through my whole presentation. I'll just go to the town part, if you don't mind. Can I? No, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, so what we have right now, we have Skyrise. That's what Moscow and many cities in Russia and China look like. Obviously, your cities are different. They're more like suburban type, but suburbia is mm. as well, because it's just too far without a car you you you're stuffed you know what i mean but that's in russia so that's what it looks like in russia freedom you can build anything you want but there is nobody knows each other and and then there is villages the village story I already told you and uh, land is cheap house mm. like an old house like that so with a hectare of land is three thousand dollars but then you'll you either don't have don't have any neighbors or if you have a neighbors then they might be jealous or you might have problems mm. with them 
uh, all the neighbors from the next door village will come and cause shit because uh, why are you so different you know so obviously the need for something alternative so here is Oroville and a few other eco villages uh, Itaka by New York um, you know but again very strange dogmas like we all get paid the same I find mm. that weird. You know, how can you take a person that's had like a million evolutions and another person that was a dog in a last life? Let's just say if that's true. I don't know if that's mm. clever, you know. How can you take everybody okay. and just, you know, communism already failed in Russia. So we don't want to repeat that. You know, we want to move forward. But there are some good ideas that we can pick up from eco villages, such as permaculture, such as some communal, maybe right. um, co-housing ideas and maybe some suppers together, and maybe some even businesses that we can co-create, which is crucial. Because when you're out there on the land, you, you need to have some form of economics, you know. So there is mm. a sect in Siberia where I was. They made amazing stuff. So they mm. made sacred geometry and they built temples. But again, they took money from people who, uh, you know, big money. People sold their flats in Moscow for like, uh, I don't know, $300,000 and donated it. And they were obviously unhappy because he promised them, uh, you know, he promised them stuff mm. that wasn't delivered, such as <laughs> a third layer of teeth. You know, we get milk teeth, we got our normal teeth. And then he promised that they're all going to start getting new teeth. And they didn't oh, wow. get those teeth. <laughs> and they didn't get anything much else that he promised. And then the apocalypse that he kept on moving 2012, then he kept on moving the date and nothing happened. So, you know, to keep people, you need to keep them in fear. So, like, the community is like, you know, some are living, lots left. Uh, eco villages we can take the best of them blah 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 from Jen whatever uh, that's a village I designed based on a slopey uh, region with a hill uh, a hill a hill so all these key points where hills are all roads mm. on the line there's an earthship hotel there, there are the plots uh, one acre one acre one acre one acre one acre there's communal garden another communal thing there's my architecture my bio architecture school with empty plots of land where we can build with students there's a permaculture story i did this with paul richardson by the way he's in america um yeah it's beautiful mar markets markets uh that uh, it's like central access like main access festival okay. grounds uh, another labyrinth a theater uh, apple orchard was an apple cafe apple buffet apple pie and apple whatever juice uh lots of domes to rent a lake um you know sacred geometry food forest, uh, a conference center. Where this story ended was the owner of the land came, put a spade down into the ground, says, okay, here I'm planting apple trees. And I'm like, uh, what the fuck did we design this for three months? <laughs> we walked this land, we, to, we took topographical maps. You know you know what I mean? This is a lot of work uh, to, to, to do this. Uh, Paul came to, from England to, to draw the... To, to Krasnodar to the south of Russia and he flew to me in South Africa so we could draw this so wow. three months of work and it all ended in, in in one second when an owner came and says okay so obviously now this brings us to the idea of uh, you know one guy owns it all doesn't work you know what I mean mm. so then I thought well what what can we do can we take the best and this is very quick sketch but this sketch is what actually is what I'm working on because a lot of the land here in Russia where I am and Moscow to St. Petersburg and all the way to South is flat. So obviously I showed you what can be done on a hillside, mm -hmm. but what can be done on a flat land is um, if, if we have a, a lattice, okay? And imagine mm -hmm. it's done in a line. So I should have carried this on left and right, okay? Like the the the, 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 the South Arabian line, but it's not as hectic, okay. not, not as costly. This is a very low cost way of manif manifesting it. So the square is a hectare. Okay. With a 12 pointed shape, which is uh, 54 meters. We have squares. Uh, which are 15 meters and we have hexagons which are 25 meters so okay. just to give you a bit of the size so based on this then we have let's say if it is one hectare here okay mm -hmm. then what we have is we have let's say four homes okay now what happens with homes each one is cooling themselves individually right now and heating themselves individually right now so mm -hmm. what if we have one of these squares as the heating unit that sends the hot water underneath along the circle you know just next to the road or something and heats up all these buildings you know for example what mm -hmm. if we have a manufacturing space like an arch like they did in arco santi i'll show you just now like a man manufacturing space so these four people could be landing up here by interests which mm -hmm. is also interesting i've heard in your presentation things you touch on and that's why 
there could be one parking lot. Why should we park each car in each individual? Right. Uh, we could have one maker space, for example, a maker space, a concept from America where tools are rented out, You're not rented, like you can pay like a certain fee, you know, and this obviously can expand it. This builds up on Jacques Fresco's model, but makes it a lot more, a lot less expensive. And another key part is this is a hectare and you look at all these <clears throat> 12 pointed uh, for forests, 33%. 33% is left in the forest. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So one third, either agroforestry or food forest or whatever, or, or natural forest. So with little islands, with one of these islands that could animals could cross between these little um, uh, things. Sure. Okay. Uh, and this is a very quick sketch. I just threw in a little block of flats, a three book, because not everybody wants to live in a house. Obviously, it won't look like this, but um, you know, there is a block of flats with a greenhouse attached, obviously, facing south. And I just threw a few of my models. Uh, and then in the middle is either a park area or um medicinal herbs. Yeah. Obviously, greenhouses can also be segregated to a separate place. So whoever, you know, again, central heated greenhouse. So whoever wants to plant in winter time, you know what I mean? Like using mm -hmm. for example, my um, this this design that I'm doing with uh, like Canadian greenhouse or whatever. So so this is an idea. And then obviously uh, high rise. And when I mean high rise, I'm talking about Habitat 67, which all blocks face south south very uh, important they could okay. be this is all in a line like a long line you know mm -hmm. uh, then they can be obviously on the south side so they're on shade because you know and imagine if you put it on a, on on sorry they're on the northern side so on the south is the is all your low low rise buildings you know what i mean okay. but, but it's not just limited to like a household per hexagon it's this whole hexagon story this circular thing around could be a long pond with mm -hmm. connecting spaces around like a trapezoid vaults. I'll show you just now trapezoid vaults. And then each one has access to the water. So this, this is whole water could be. The, the possibilities are infinite. And I'll show you another example. Like another example would be, because this whole village uh, town works on manufacturing, number one. Number two, uh, ecotourism. And number three, like healing and stuff and whatever else you want to add. But these are the three main components. And obviously, permaculture principle, people, planet, profit. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, another example is the beekeeper. Beekeeper comes and says, guys, I want to be part of this. And we develop a whole thing for the beekeeper. I'll show you a few slides just now on the beekeeper. Just hold Yeah, it's up. very important. Yeah. Yeah. And the beekeeper could get... Let's just jump straight to the beekeeper. Um, the beekeeper could get... Um, uh, uh, a whole bunch of uh, types of cal earth domes built um, um, because here we go because they lend of themselves like a beehive already can, can you see that yeah <laughs> they, cool. they, the bags can be burnt as can be shown in my uh, uh, water tank mm -hmm. so you burn them you paint them with lime and you get these types of domes but with this effect you, you got it mm. right uh, mm -hmm, so the, right. the whole story for the beekeeper gets arranged and then there's bees and then there is bee uh, bee pollen and bee massage and bee whatever you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it can be done in this bee beautiful style uh and then that's that one hectare so you develop one hectare at a time because if you go to jacques fresco's model um let's jump there i don't know yeah if you go to jacques fresco's model you know he's designed this a city that costs a trillion dollars or something, which is just, you know, yeah, well. it's just, it's just, it's beautiful. It's obviously a lot of inspiration is taken from there, but it's just too expensive. So I, I'm proposing we develop one hectare at a time. Um, and then we implement beautiful things as we go, as we get more people. Um, what, um, talking about high rise, which are on the, on the northern side, yeah. Uh, 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 Moshe Safdi is a great architect. He's doing some good work with buildings, with balconies and a garden. So, because, you know, the, the high rise right now is, and I, I don't mean high rise like a hundred story, I mean like five story, maybe, you know, right. what I mean? they can be done in this like a form that, that all face south, that, that get, um, that get the sunlight and each balcony has obviously for cold climate, has a greenhouse. Uh, I'm mm. a practical guy, so I won't talk pie in the sky, but here's an ETFE material that has 50-year warranty. Okay, wow. 50. Well, I don't know about warranty, but it's a 50-year lifespan. 
you know what mm. I mean? So, and it's used for commercial uh, serious buildings. So each balcony gets, uh, you know, like a little pod so you, people can garden. So, so even mm -hmm. our high rise will be very green and biomimicry inspired. Yeah. And then uh, obviously we're calling, like if it's ecotourism, we're looking for different geometries, you mm -hmm. know, things are doing in Bali. I'm not saying it's going to look like that, but the way it's looking like I showed you right now with these square buildings is just ugly. Mm. Mm. So there's definitely a call for different geometry and it's not always more expensive because when you're using these types of forms, uh, strength is in the geometry. So you're using much less materials, much, mm -hmm. much, much, much less materials. So uh, that's, that's, you know, uh, why I dedicated four slides for the Arca Scienti is <clears throat> because um, Arca Scienti is a cr great concept in Arizona, I'm sure you're aware of, uh, and it was built literally with very little money. It was built with people paying for workshops to build mm -hmm. it, and it was built by, uh, you see, they're making bells, those beautiful bells at Arca Scienti. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's all made with bells, uh, so, you know, the profit from the bells, and people who are paying for the workshops to to build the Arca Scienti and maintain it now. The, the workshops are continuing. And they've got this amazing method called silt casting. So you literally dug, dig out a, a mold in the ground and you pour it, you, know, you pour these shapes in the ground, uh, I'm sure with some rebar. And then they use the little crane of theirs, which you'll still see on some of their videos are still standing there. And they, they literally lifted the whole thing up with, without, trillion, without billions of dollars. Do, do you understand? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Students inspired, students build, um amazing ideas of uh, taking a uh, hot air from the greenhouses and 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 pushing it underneath the city so you know to store the heat so there's some great ideas and another cool thing 40,000 people visit Arco Santi every year to wow. participate in their workshops in their events in bell making workshops and building workshop and just whatever you know they they, they have there so the model is great because uh, Arco Santi only 8% was built. You know, only 8%. That's the whole city. Mm, I'm not wow. saying we have to go so big. And I'm not saying let's go for the grand uh, millennia or whatever. Sure. Concepts. Uh, let's keep it small for now. Let's keep it realistic. So people are like, shit, man, this is doable. This mm -hmm. is doable. We've got a bit of interesting flats with round windows. Very cool. Uh, we have some greenhouses. It's just a very cool concept for um, for amphitheater, for some urban cool spaces like event spaces. And uh, I just think it's great to 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 really take as, as something doable, as something. So we now we're talking about we have a high rise on the northern side, maybe five six stories high. We have mm -hmm. um, we have a few of these interesting uh, 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 urbanistic kind of centers because not everybody wants to live. You, we can't make, listen, the main thing that I'm trying to say is we can't, like Anastasia concept, let's all get one hectare. I've been to mm. a where everybody takes one hectare. It's a, it's a mess because people took all their one hectares for apocalypse sake, yeah? And none of them are living there. They all just purchase land and they move back to the city. And mm. five, six families that are actually trying to do something on the land the kids have to walk for an hour to get to the other family because huh. all these uh, hundreds of hectares, if not thousands, have been purchased and uh, nobody's living in them. They're, they're like mm. look, waiting for apocalypse days or like COVID when that hit, they all moved there for a year and then they moved out. You know, so it's bullshit. So we need to up the density, but not as insane as it's currently happening in the cities and not as low as uh, it's happening in suburbia. We need to find a balance. That's why those hexagons with 25 by 25 meters that mm -hmm. I showed you, where we do have private property and uh, but it's only 25 meters so it's still a higher density uh, space if people mm. want to buy land and live out and they need their or 10 10 hectares per family homesteading go for it but not here right. this is not for this uh you you want to go and take a uh, 100 hectares for a family go elsewhere buddy uh, you know because uh you know or nearby you can buy your 100 hectares but that's something else we need to be aware of because once we need to once this thing starts working the land around is going to be start being sold really fast mm. and so you need to straight away you know plan out for like you know at least 100 hectares minimum mm -hmm. not 200 
uh, which is possible in Russia. 200 hectares could be not expensive, uh, very doable. Like, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> so I'm currently looking for Americans, Canadians who want to sell out, who want to sell right. out of their lifestyle of their, of their, of their uh, and with their $300,000 or why 300 it's also very important because the way to get into russia is either um you have like the golden visa which is 300,000 or 250,000 dollars or you have to have a certain profession which uh like it specialist and there's mm -hmm. a whole there's a whole list on uh, points yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no there's a lot of professions like doctors teachers all get uh, uh, you know uh, quick 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 uh, citizenship if you have a specific profession, but if you don't, then you know you gotta you gotta you gotta put in the cash. Now the cash mm -hmm. gives you obviously the house, it gives you the plot, and it gives in private property, and it gives you part in the business. And the business could be wherever you know it could be from beekeeping, it could be a three D printing, uh, it could be making a labyrinth, whatever you want. You know you you design it, you take it, and you maybe connect with three, five, 10 other individuals and you start making that business, you know, with your, with your neighbors. So mm -hmm. it could be a conference center that you guys want to build. So, so like this John Ashaf, I think John uh, 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 was a solar living Institute, by the way, closed again, we need to investigate why it closed. He sold it, you know, a great space. Mm -hmm. Amazing what he's done there. He wrote a book, highly recommended, uh, Solar Living Institute, but he closed it because it didn't have this holistic, um, holistic like a little community that people could buy in that could, in, you know, it was just a conference center and a few interesting buildings and a labyrinth uh -huh. and people came, visited, and now what? Now what? Mm. So it's sold, <clears throat> it's gone. And obviously we've got the Earthship concept, but, you know, again, desert, uh, uh, far out, uh, I, I don't know, but great. Love the Earthship concept for the buildings and the community for the color codes. Very cool uh, because, you know, you don't get a pink building there because the colors are all matching. So we need, we need um, what's it called? We need some obviously guides and regulations such as, you know, guys, if you're mowing lawn, let's do it on like Wednesdays, you know, uh, weather permitting. Why? Sounds like a stupid rule, but it's not. Imagine everybody mows, you mow on Wednesday, I mow on Thursday, and now we have mowing. There's every... always noise. Yeah. Noise constantly, mm. like same as like cut chainsawing or whatever, you know, mm. guys, let's limit it to like this day and this day, you know, obviously by communal uh, consensus, but not even. We got to come with hard rules. Like you want to part, be part of this uh, town. These are the rules. You know what I mean? Like another one is dogs barking. That you you go like 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 I have a neighbor who doesn't live there, but he tied his dog with a chain and it fucking barks all night long. Terrible. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm literally ready to go and shoot the fucking thing. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. But 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 six months of that, you'd go and shoot the fucking. Yeah, thing. yeah. No. You know what I mean? So so we gotta have some guides, and I'm sorry to be so harsh. But you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's, it's got to be thought through. Another thing I like about Earthship is, is that everybody faces south. So the houses are not obtrusive. You're looking at a little hillside in front of you if you happen to be behind. But obviously, we stagger people like, you know, those hexagons are not exactly in a line. So you you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so and you have the forest, 33% forest around. Uh, and <clears throat> the whole 12, the... Anyway, it, it details, whatever. Uh, the, when I spoke about a three-story building, you remember the two cup of hexagon mm -hmm. square? Um, that could look like that, for example. With, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Five meter bananas, pawpaw, uh, the bottom left picture, yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and, uh, and and then that's the typical airship inside. So this is what I'm developing. Obviously, 3D printing, that's where we're going amazing so that could be one of the businesses that i'll invest in and i need like five or six or seven or ten or twenty people to go in with me on this business such as people who can use grasshopper rhino 3d such as architects landscape landscape designers um um gosh whoever and plumbers whoever can help in the in the construction business and then mm -hmm. we set that up we in our community and not everybody has to live in that same one hectare by the way somebody could mm -hmm. be living in the next door hectare you know what i mean and they just 
we have that arch that I was showing you, the, the arch, mm -hmm. arch in that arch, which obviously in a cold climate has to have a greenhouse, like a half geodesic or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but, so it's climate, uh, nice and in, in cold climate, six months winter, but we're planning to do this in the south of Russia. But if we go to north, then we've got to look at things like that. But then, but then you know, you, you basically build up that with the community members uh, and it's a business, it's an economic driven business. And of course we put planet and people first. So, you know, another amazing 3D printing, uh, I even drew a little sketch here, a very quick sketch. Obviously, it needs to be refined, but the Philip Block is doing amazing work with uh, interesting printing. And then the whole thing goes up in a, in a, in a, in a day on a form, mm -hmm. and then that can be buried. Uh, there's two gay guys on Kirsten Dixon's channel that she released. Uh, two gay guys build a... Um, um, a, a, like a like a similar thing, but they put like windows. So so maybe have a look there. She just did a video, but like anyway. So these things can be buried. Um, I like fabrics, and obviously fabrics is also a cool way of building. So so construction mm. business will obviously investigating new methods of construction. Uh, this is what I know. I know ferro cement. This is my photos from Mexico. Uh, brickwork, amazing stuff is happening with brickwork. Very thin tiles already going for a long time. Gustavino has piloted that obviously from uh, Barcelona, came to America, mm. built over a thousand buildings all over America. Uh, great work. So, again, fill a block here on the top right. Strength through geometry, no glue between these limestones. It was all mm. placed in the formwork and the whole thing stands. Just shows wow. you what can be done. He's got an interesting plugin called Rhino Vault 2, which is a plugin into Rhino 3D software um yeah obviously very strong now these vaults are quite tricky to build you either go with a very precise 3d printing methods like i've shown you but if you but again if you go for like you have clay and you want simplicity you don't have a cool 3d printer or you don't have the ability then this kind of thing you need to be a master now mm. i said we we can't like wait for 50 years for these masters to appear from mexico wherever the hell they come from um mm we need to use technology so why don't we put the augmented reality the glasses like this guy is bending and the, each brick can be shown to us where we build and then you can literally build with um hmm. with uh, unskilled labor uh, uh it's a, a very fast setting lime uh uh, uh, uh you know the, the plaster paris type of stuff so it sets okay. like seconds seconds and then uh, you know obviously once you put three layers of those bricks then this thing is like insanely strong you can mm. uh, close to i don't know 10 tons 20 tons per square meter um but again reality check if we need something simpler in the beginning you know right. there is a fantastic method from cal earth using a formwork uh a, a ferro cement is very time consuming lots of rebar and mesh and chicken wire and it's just mm. insane. This is a simple method. A formwork, four plumbing pipes up front, four at the back, just to keep the cement from going away. Mixes one to five, earth underneath your feet, and uh, five parts, one part cement, and you pour the roof in a day on some mm. bags. Uh, and you can obviously do 20 of them next to each other. You know, uh, my uh, water is very important. John Todd, I studied with him. So yeah, just I'm not going to go rainbows in our houses to bring huh. in light for flow forms you know we're all talking about the the same thing i haven't even shown you the rest of my presentation but it's it's not important what's important is um is that i'm finished and then i'm handing over to you <laughs> it sounds like um you know you you're in the thick of this transition that i think to, in many cases we're all kind of facing major changes in our lives um especially over the last three years, you know, with COVID and it, people realizing that they don't have that security, you know, the reality around them that they assumed that, okay, I'm going to be able to live a kind of a normal life until I get to my retirement. And then I'm going to, you have my pension. I think people are starting to realize that that's kind of idea of like, you know, going forward, isn't really on the table anymore. And um, there is still some fear there's a lot of fear because and rightly it's so change yeah and rightly yeah. so because pension funds are being traded on uh, volatile stocks <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's going to be gone so they you know it's it's one of those things that if you don't know by now and i came from canada i've lived in canada for the last well for about 20 years and <clears throat> my pension i consider it to be gone um because canada as a country 
has failed in their requirements to meet the what they have as a charter, the Hudson Bay Charter. They were started off with England and basically very different from the states and it's collapsed and they don't have law of order now. So so really the government is doing whatever they can. They're now fining people up to $25,000. Uh, they, they haven't started it, but they're discussing the idea of finding people that want to leave Canada, right? They want to come down to Mexico. I'm in Mexico, yeah, at uh, the Riviera Maya. And basically, yeah, if you want to leave Canada and immigrate here, you're going to have to pay $25,000 to the Canadian government to get that permission for them to leave, right? So so that's, you know, not to mention the fact that he, um, Trudeau also, you know, seized bank accounts, right? So in the period where people, there were truckers that went to protest what was going on. So we're seeing a lot of, you know, uh, the trust that people had with institutions, that trust has moved and um, it's moving into, uh, it's still in a position of like, who do we actually know that we can try? I think there's still a lot of doubts of like who we can trust, but somewhere along the line, people are not trusting the institutions as much as they used to. And so there is an opening to, okay, what are we going to do? But we're not, we're not, um, familiar with this kind of situation you know like uh, i'm obviously i'm from europe you know like originally my ancestors came from europe actually from holland and they ended up in south africa and you know th and they ran away from the dutch empire right they ran away from the dutch east indian you know companies and so on and the slavery and they went to other parts of the world and you know two three hundred years later now we're in the same situation where people are starting to realize hang on um, we're trying to get away from the tyranny, right? And I ran also, away from South Africa in COVID. Yeah. I ran. I ran so fast that I left my house yeah. after 12 yes. years of repayment with a hundred thousand dollars worth of permaculture investment. Oh in man! All those systems that I've built that I haven't shown wow. you. I just walked out. I took my pumps. I donated it to a permaculture school. And I, I left all my solar systems, my mom's garage. We ran. It was so dangerous. It was where you saw, sorry for interrupt. I'll, um, no, no. It's or one person standing at the rover traffic light saying no job, no food. It was a cardboard. Yeah. At COVID, there were 20 of them, 25 yeah. of them. And all jumping on your car, like, please feed me. I'm yeah, happy. Yeah. And we just thought it was my wife, it was my ex-wife, Zoe. We just thought, shit, this is smells like, you know. And we obviously couldn't sell it in COVID. Anyway, we just ran. We it's a mess. Yeah. The bank just went and absorbed mm. And still well, that, put a bill to me that I owe the same amount that I bought it for. <laughs> yeah, because you, you're unfortunately, it's got to do with color, right? So, so in Africa, actually, Rhodesia is now, I think, a, a safe haven in that area. So, if you, if, if people that are in South Africa, you know, want to look for a safe place, they can go to Rhodesia, which used to be considered to be, you know, the, the, the dump. All right but it's actually now turning into a much better quality of light the government there seems to have got their stuff together so you know like Af south africa is a wild rough place yeah. and it's 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 wild west so not to mention i mean it's not to say that it's not like other places but because of the nature of the people that you know the the, the cultures that they are warrior class cultures so they are warriors but now you're in mexico you got the Aztecs and you got the Mayans, but that wasn't the warrior aspect wasn't what drew, drove them, right? What drove them was basically, you know, discovering the world around. They, they brought in the calendar systems. They d discovered, you know, uh, astronomy and, and how to, and astrology and, and also and how to interpret food. The they, were, they were hunter gatherers. Yeah. Very yeah. different so that's, to warriors. Very different to warriors. Yeah. yeah. So there was, Thank it you. was really a, a process of, you know, becoming more aware of like, what is the purpose of life? They didn't get fixated on trying to just survive. They were learning about, you know, what is it that we're experiencing as humans? They were tapping into this thing of, you know, what is the creative force of a human? And that's what gives us life. And that's how we overcome, you know, these obstacles. This is, that's what actually gives us a better quality of life, right? Is through understanding the relationships in building that like you said, if we go alone into the wild, which many people have, and, and it, you can do that, but the risk is that you're not going to be able to be uh, able to be your most human self because your creativity isn't being seen. Your creativity, you know, I go back to the, the double split experiment. 
what we know is that nature itself is looking for attention. Nature, every element. If you if you're looking at it, it's changing its behavior. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that is that is in the imprint of our on a subatomical you know level. That's also in us. So we you know we 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 have this innate ability to kind of be change the environment by putting time and attention into it. And the more time and attention we put into something, the more it starts to form into something that becomes tangible. Uh, the thing is today. Uh, with our distractions, with all the work and everybody's trying to keep, you know, status quo, they don't have the time and attention to actually focus on the things that are going to bring them joy, right? The things that are going to allow them to be more creative. And, and we just... And coupled with that, Mark, um, <clears throat> the, we are trying to avoid the negative feelings, which are actually trying to drive us into mm. certain changes of behavior, changes of location, changes of not going to a job and doing something else and we like yeah it's a big story yeah, so, yeah. yeah. like pain and pleasure <clears throat> um this is you know the pavlonian dog kind of experiment of like we know that we've been told this is good and that's bad and that's another thing is that uh the duality you know in in western culture we've really been sold this idea that you know there's good and bad things and you know you want to naturally we are trying to label people good or bad and really it's not that people are good or bad it's that people do good things or they do bad things it's that thing that they're doing that is good or bad it's we you know we, we go into these generalizations we fall into these paradigms of you know uh, they're basically subjective kind of imaginations and we take them up as true we're losing touch with reality in that sense right we're losing touch with what is actually the thing that's defining the way we live and just in this call for instance you know um it's great we have technology we can use it as a tool we can communicate we can cross ideas but unfortunately it's never going to make it as good as if we were really sitting across a table and having you know dinner together or something you can never take that experience because the communication aspect is only a small aspect of or the verbal communication is only a small aspect of just our you know, nonverbal communication. And really we connect when our bodies come together, there are other things taking place that we don't not even aware of, but they have an effect on each other. And so it, you know, if you you've been there, right? If you 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 like you mentioned, you go to a small little town, they're in a depression, they're drinking, they, you know, they're not conscious of what's going on. And it has an effect on everybody else because this is a low kind of vibration. And it's mostly because they, they're sitting and they're doing nothing. They're not being creative. They're not sh sh seeing that if they just start to interact, even if they start moving rock, just take the sand and organize the sand into different forms of, you know, quality. Okay, we're going to have, you're going to start to be able to have more power to make a difference in your environment. Because that's something that we have innately. We want to be able to interact with our environments. But with the the buildings uh, that we've built, it's based about in our communities and our suburbs and our cities. It's all got to do with how much money. It's and all got to do with fragmentation. But that's that, and that's that's kind of a, we basically built these panopticon prisons. You know, we're in the prison and we can't see that it's a prison because we're so removed from the creative the the ability to actually live in good harmony that we don't even recognize it we so removed from what natural law is and so we we have to use these tools to basically give us a space where we can find and get in touch with what is it feel like to be natural law because we're so far and from it everything around us you know uh, that that we're sitting in is not natural you know, and and it's partially because we're as a species, we're kind of not natural, right? Like we're kind of weird as well as a species. Like we 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 shouldn't like if if we go out into the wild, we won't last very long. We can get sick very easily, and then you're not productive. And you know how it is when you're alone, and your food and your you know what all those things are dependent on activities you have to do that day, and you're not feeling good then yeah. immediately it has a domino effect on yeah, the yeah. future right so so being and another in thing community, and, yeah. and another thing that hammers our productivity like as i was going through this harsh turmoil of uh, divorce and uh, it's just very i can't work I, i'm mm. out for weeks i'm out <clears throat> that's a divorce that could be a milder thing like when you're just feeling an emotional charge you don't have the tools to process it. You're calling it bad and you're not letting it flow through or right. whatever. 
And <clears throat> you also can't work, you can't be productive. Not only that, there is another thing that happens, a human law. When you feel shit, you go to the closest person, whether it's your partner, your child, mm. or your community member, your par community partner in the business, and you lash out your shit on them. So you can mm. push them down, stepping on their head mm -hmm. to lift up yourself. Mm -hmm. Bump up, like in English, bump up. And that it, that one thing is what hammers all relationships. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, dominoes. People, so. people feel bad and they bring other people down to lift up. That's it. But they're taught that as well. You know, like we, we see that at school when we're being raised, we see that in our culture, right? Because it's the only way that people f get a little bit of freedom to express themselves is when they like, you know, just do a little jab, you know, they're just like, oh, uh, you've heard it before. Um, you know, you you meet someone for the day and they say, what's, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking sick? And you're like, I'm feeling fine, you know, but yeah, you yeah. know, that that has an effect on the way you're going to continue for because and so these small yeah the, these unethical you know it's if it's true then it's another thing but if they're just doing it for their self gain then it leads to a fallacy it leads to a situation where you can't have trust just to chime in i had a situation today and i reacted for the first time the correct way that my ex-wife taught me so I'm, we're in the sauna. Russians all do sauna. Everybody oh, yeah. did, and uh, we all hit ourselves with birch wood uh, thingies, leafy things. Anyways, I walk into the sauna and I have this car, uh, an old, uh, it's not that old. It's like seven years old. But uh, this Buhanka, it's this Russian typical car in Masha the Bay. You see it, the the the, the, um, the medicine car. Anyway, with two round uh, 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 lights. This so classic, you obviously yeah. saw me parking because you parked next to me. And the first question is, how old is your car? And I'm like, you know, I'm still like trying to like, why is he asking me that? And I'm like, uh, and he's like, you don't even know. Did you steal it? So that the jab mm -hmm. that you're talking about, there it is, a double jab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the guy obviously sees somebody else that he perceives that is better off than him. Mm -hmm. I'm a worse car, but energetically, I'm better off because today I'm starting to fly. <laughs> and uh, understanding all this, uh, you know, anyway, the, the, the trauma that I've gone through in the last two days was a divorce. I'm starting to, like, lift up. And anyway, he sees that he wants to jab me down so he can bring him, himself up. So I sit and I wait for about two minutes. There's another conversation started up in the sauna with others. And I'm like, I want to answer your question. And this is the way to hit this in the in the fucking in the right place. Your question about my car and whether I stole stole it, it was that question. You are trying to humiliate me, to lift yourself mm -hmm. up. I see his intent, and you need to voice out the intent. Right. Not yeah. what he says. Not answer mm -hmm. his question because he doesn't even look for an answer. He wants to humiliate you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The jab. And I, and I say to him, I see that you are jabbing me and that you are trying to lift yourself up by jamming me. And he's like, eh, eh, no, 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 that's not what I'm doing. But you hit the nail on the head. That's how you, that's how you solve these things. You have to. For the first time in my life at 42 and a half years of age, I responded this way. Usually I'd keep quiet and then I'd get home and then mm. I'd feel like a burning sensation feeling shit. And a normal folk who doesn't do any diary, analytical work, no writing, he'd probably feel shit, have a beer, uh, right. hit, hit his son, uh, swear at his wife, and then go to sleep. And then divorce, a uh, child says, fuck you. I don't want to mm. see you. My son told me that. And uh, that's how it rolls. We have uh, mm. fucked up families. Uh, and, uh, and it's just how we act in these situations. And this happens on a daily basis. Your boss could shout at you. You have two choices. You either say to me, hang on. Mm. This is the last time that you've spoken to me like that. And this is very important why we say this, because our communities mm. will, will break if we don't do yeah. what we just say. We have two choices. You either tell your boss, this is the last time you spoke to me like that. If I did something wrong in the work, please explain to me how to do it correctly. I'm going to do it correctly. Or... Mm. We say we have debt, uh, credit to pay, children's school, I'll swallow it, I'll smile. Right, right. Guess right. what? You'll come home, you'll lash out on your wife, your wife will go and scream at the son, the older son will scream at the younger daughter or, or hit the younger daughter, the younger yeah. daughter will 
kick the cat, the kid, cat will eat the mouse and so on. Anything in the universe you poke at, pokes out there. <clears throat> and then that road splits again. Uh, the, the boss could say, either give you a finger and say, you're fired, or mm. he'll start getting respect for you. So you know what I mean? And it's daily situations. Mm. So people who are joining our towns, our, mm. I don't know what to call them, uh, uh, whatever, you know, uh, mm. need to go through this training. Because mm -hmm. the last thing I want is to set up a, a business with five or six other people and we're having this amazing uh, go venture with uh, uh, our 3D printing and, and we build, because the first right. business that needs to be set up is the business of construction. You right. know, it's just a reality check. If you want to build, <laughs> like Mike Reynolds from Earthship, set up a biotechnology construction company. And biotechnology mm -hmm. construction company builds more of what they've dreamed up. Okay, so the last thing I want is to somebody come home who had uh, who had come to the business the next day at work, or, mm. you know, and he just had a lashing out from somebody else. He accepted it and swallowed it, and now he's giving me a, 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 a lip right. or, or cold shoulder or whatever, however, the, the, you know what I mean? And then yeah. because, you know, like, hey, what's wrong with you today? And he's like, well... And he kind of, you know what I mean? He doesn't know that that's yeah. the thing that happened last night. He's, and, and then boom, you know, like, okay, well, I can't work with you because you bring that to me 10, 10, 20, 30 times, you know, like I can't work with that. Sorry, buddy. And then, you know, the construction company. Right. Offers. Very important what I say. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, I think something that has been uh, kind of overlooked with the intentional communities is that, you can't just bring and I've tried it already. Um, you you can't just bring people together and say we're going to build some. We're going to we're going to live now together. You, it, it's not possible to actually do something that's going to be sustainable in the long term and actually build a society like that. You can't just uh, if that, that it happens, it's because they're running away from something, but they have something in common. If they're running away from you know, totalitarian kind of environment where you know, okay, we know instinctively if we don't work together we're not going to survive. So that's what brings them together. But that's under fear. And and it does have a lot of negative effects if you come together under that fear. And then I think a lot of people jumped into that with COVID, right? It was like, okay, let's go get the property. Let's go all work together. And we're going to break out of the system. The, th the thing that brings people together, though, is being able to work together and being creative together on a project. So uh, I think the the... The overlook, what we've overlooked in these intentional communities and what you're bringing up is really like, what is the economy? What is it that we're doing that we're being productive? Because we have to produce. Nature has a way of always, there's always fruits, you know, even if you look at the simplest plant or tree out there, it has a purpose. It's doing something in the biosphere. And I think the key thing is that we're now at a stage 60 years ago, we didn't know what we know today. We, we are now in a situation where we understand, look, if you look at um, just growing our food and we look at the farms, we understand now that the way we, you know, our agricultural system works is destroying and creating the deserts. So we know that the food we're getting, if you go and you keep on living the same way you, you're living or have you're been living for the last, you're going to get sick. It's just a matter of time. And so you're not getting the nutrients. The only way for you to get the full nutrients and the best is actually to have that, pick that food off the plant or at least, you know, out of the ground or whatever. But you have, that's when you're going to get the most out of it. But, and, wait, sorry, I got to chime in. But sure. as I described earlier, a man on the loan on the farm and what you said, if you're not feeling good and you're trying to set right. that subsistence farming with chickens and cows, uh, it, it fails because first of all, you got to know thyself. Like all trees I touch, they just die because I'm a bio architect. Like it, it's a good idea. But it's not my thing. I don't have green fingers, you know, right, right. but somebody else does. So people got to know who's got green fingers and maybe form a cooperative and then they can push out much large, larger um, um, quantity and quality of good organic food because that's what they do. But if... Mm -hmm. Each person on their own, like a homestead with a family, they've got 10, 20 hectares. Yeah. That's good luck. Point. Yeah, good luck. It's uh it is mostly a recipe for disaster from what we know. And uh when you when you look at the people that need to step up, right? So uh to, to get a project going, 
Uh, a lot of us also do this mistake where we will have this idea. We'll have a great idea and we'll be like, hey, I've got this idea and we can make nice, you know, presentations and we can, you know, portray it, market it really well and get the group together. And then we can even start paying people, right? You can be like, okay, I've got investor, I've got venture capital and we start paying people. Nothing will happen until the actual original thought, so the person with the original thought actually starts to demonstrate the actual work that they want to do. So it's just as important to have creative leaders that want to put in the effort, that want to actually carry it through. They are so passionate about what they see that they actually go and they start to do it themselves. They don't wait for the group to do it. They start to show, represent, you know, like demonstrate how to do it. So a lot of um, the, you know, I see a lot of people saying, hey, let's let's grow, let's start a little business. Let's, we all need to start to learn how to grow our food and uh, create, you know, our own security within our food, our water and our shelter. These are the things that have been, circumvented from us and you know if you look back our our great great grandparents why did they leave the farms why why did we sell our properties out and you know to some extent it's because we had this like i'm gonna do it all by myself and and we do need to take that attitude of like initiative and trying to do it by ourselves but it, it it takes other people to come in and start to see where they can help you because we all we all have like you say a little bit different aspects of qualities that allow us to be creative and so if you come in and you say hey listen I, I can build dome homes or i can do that is going to support the beehive guy right i love that idea because bees are so important we we all should be in trying to invest in some way of supporting our bee, local bee uh, uh, nurseries around because it's the <laughs> fundamental aspect of growing our food and without the pollinization you're not going to have the diversity yeah. and so so That's basically, very important, but, but Mark, just to chime in again, uh, you said that the guy with the creative idea is going to go out and do it. I left to the farm. I started doing it. And I'm like, because maybe I, yeah. did, I didn't invite people properly or, you know, because when you're doing it, you can't be doing the marketing. Three years later, I'm still alone on the land. Yes, I'm doing, but like, where are the people? So then I moved back to the city and uh, Johannesburg and I started doing all those wonderful things there. And at least people came to a few workshops that I ran there because, you know, people in Johannesburg, it's a big city. So we need to actually address how do we start this thing? Because, uh, you know, <clears throat> me going alone and trying to show that's the way to do it. I've done it four times. Yes. Each so time it came to depression, anger and bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah. It's because basically you you know you overshot the mark, right? Like you you had a lot of um, the energy going into a huge idea that was kind of distant for the average guy, right? So finding a balance of project where the average guy is have his has his day to day functionality. He's going home. He's like you know still got the TV, still microwave, all that stuff, but he can do something you know, in a small uh, uh, effort, right? Like, so maybe like once or twice a week, um, he comes and he comes to your home and you, you live close to him and you're showing a project that's just like composting, right? Like you can start composting in your house, right? Just take all the waste that you have and, and you start to show them how to make compost. That is not as big of a challenge as if they had to go all the way to you know a remote place and actually meet you over there and try and help you. So m starting off with really small projects that you can do together that's easy for people to basically stop getting distracted with the bullshit on TV, the bullshit of like the you know w what are all the requirements? Oh no, you got to go get this license. Now you got to get that, and you got to put the gas in. Now you so they get they stuck in this system that constantly nags on their attention and what we what our biggest thing is trying to get time and attention focused on things that are producing a quality of increase in quality of life so composting is a, a simple example because you can increase the quality of your life by growing food through good quality soil and you can show them over a period if they actually know how to do this they can teach someone else so doing little courses keeping it small is an easy barrier of entry right so i think i think Mark, just um, talking about composting i, I go, want to go a step further um and what if every single don't don't look at this fancy building look at the composting pile 
What if wow. every single bioarchitecture home that we design on our land, let's say we have three or four or five types, a two bedroom or one bedroom, a studio, they all have compost piles already plugged in. And we, had a, we have a wood chipper. And uh, uh, the research I've done is the wood, the chipping the wood and mixing it in with uh, some greens obviously provides as much heat as if you burn it. So all the excess uh, biomass we could chip up and produce and then the the compost right there if that's too grand if that's too grand here's a simple idea using um um it's, it's a design with earthworms like a, a garden tower in america inspiration yeah ibc tank yeah ibc tank the 200 gallon tank and then here is a compost in the center and there is a lid you open you throw in your waste everything except citrus lime i mean citrus fish meat and uh, uh yeah um and then you have a, a you know a simple composter and these things stand all, all, all over it, next to each home if you don't have a whole big compost pile so yeah that's perfect this is uh so that, that exactly what you in that's something that you can introduce into the local suburbs right so so it's something that is easy for them to interact with and by being able to get more people involved with that, eventually turn it into a course. We need to discuss how do we start this thing uh, because that's a big topic on its own. Okay, so uh, 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 maybe repeat what you said in the last two, two three minutes. So just so we can, uh, 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 yeah, bring it to some points and then we can continue. Yeah, so um, let's give me a minute. Yeah, we were, we were discussing the prospect of basically getting people to move out of you know the day-to-day -day kind of stuck in the system and start with small little projects and the person that's basically initiating that project is what i cons consider a creative leader so they are taking you know the energy to actually start with some small budget you know and then learn how to do this and they teach someone else to do that and mm -hmm. get the help now uh, what I'm introducing is is um, so the work from John David Garcia, and basically, you know, th there's the question of like, why is it that we haven't been able to achieve? Why haven't we been able to achieve a really good natural community? It has got a lot to do with our cr ability to tap into creativity. And so what John David Garcia shows is that when we're in a group of eight people... Mark, you know what I'm thinking? Um, because you've, you've outlined a great presentation, uh, 20, 20 minutes. I, uh, I can put in the, that presentation so you don't have to explain yourself. I listen to it. it. It makes good sense. And I want to collaborate with you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I want to collaborate with you. I'm even open in doing this kind of thing in Mexico because Mexico is close to America. All my students are in, in America and Canada. So I'm very open in even doing a, a, <clears throat> a project in Mexico with you. So what I'm thinking is to... Um, so you don't have to explain yourself because you've done a really nice presentation. We can just put it right in or put it into our next session so we can keep them under an hour or something. Um, and then, you know, then you don't have to explain everything again, but sure, sure. in, in essence, I, I th um, the, the, the way I see it, I've listened to your presentation. The way I see it is that first we need land because like, uh, people who want to buy in, they want to know where's the land. Yeah. Then there needs to be some form of a master plan, a little bit drawn up. That's why I'm getting a group of people to come on board in the telegram, people who a small group who are really willing to put in the time for the very least. So we're going to have a brainstorming session in about maybe two weeks, uh, two, three weeks. And then I'll want to call you in and we can have all put down some ideas and brainstorm together because then it's not just me and you, um, you know, and they obviously will watch your presentation and this presentation before. So, you know, and then we can already piggyback on that. Okay. Go from there. But um, there needs to be land. There needs to be uh, people who are, who are willing to put down some funds, at least. There, there needs to be trust. Because if somebody is putting down even, you know, let's say we get 20 people. I'm just, I'm just, I'm even making this up and I'm just thinking along. But let's say we get 20 people who are like, who trust us. And they say, okay, uh, 
maybe they put in a little bit of money each and we buy that land. You know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to start this thing because if you go with an investor, it's a, it's a different story. I, I don't think that's the right way to go with like one investor. But uh, maybe it's four people that form together a small team. Maybe your method of like four or eight people form a small team and say, let's say it's a construction business. And, and we start, you know, people need to put in the money. So people need to put down that $300,000 that they can get, that they sell their house and they move in. Or if they don't have money, they put in the time and there needs to be the right people, like the architects or people who know CAD software or people who can design or, you know, what we need in the beginning stages, that, that's the people we need. Then we come together and we start generating a business and that business generates uh, let's say starts building homes and that those homes sale of homes uh, can start generating money to buy the land uh, and then on that land then we can draw the master plan and once we draw the master plan and we have the first two three homes we can start selling the rest of them as property development like a cottage like a cottage you know what i mean like that property development you sell up front and then you build with that team that's the way i'm just i'm just throwing a little rough uh, what do you think of that idea? And can you chime in on that? I, I, I missed a couple of seconds there. Um, it, you were basically saying that we could uh, come together as a group and then buy land together. And uh, as like yeah, a construction so company, like the four or eight people that you speak of, uh, I wanna, I want your thoughts on that. We start a construction company where we start building homes. Uh, uh, and then we, maybe we sell one or two homes that are already built and with that one or two sales we can buy a bigger piece of land maybe you know uh, uh, in another place nearby mm -hmm. then we expand from there you know mm -hmm. then that way we don't have to have an investor the the four five six eight people that come in they they somebody has the money somebody has the skill somebody is a plumber somebody is a, a carpenter somebody is a, a 3d printer a programming specialist you know what i'm saying and somebody says guys i want to sell out i believe you know i want to sell my sh shit home in america i have three hundred thousand dollars and uh, with that money i get in uh, a, a citizenship whether it's uh, in Russia or, or Mexico or wherever, and, and plus they put the money down as an investment into this project. And with that money, we can get um, maybe the first home built, uh, uh, you know, first two homes built. One home goes to that person and another home goes for sale. For mm -hmm. And that the sale of the second home is what generates the income to build two more homes. For example, you know, the sale of yeah. two homes can generate income for four homes and a piece of a larger piece of land. Maybe, maybe an idea like that. And I want to know what you think of of that and how your presentation and how your 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 methodology can implement into this little structure that I just outlined. Is that yes? Sort? Yeah. So the. <clears throat> So buying land is is a, uh, one of the bigger goals in a, a group like that. And basically the idea is to start off really small, just getting, so you would say, what are you going to put on the land? What are, what are the things that you're going to be running on that land? What is the, what is the production or right? what economy are you going to well, actually well, create? Well, look, if, if I go with your concept, which I also agree with that I'm the, I'm the, um, the creative leader. I'm the creative leader for this first project. And the first project right. happens to be the, the bio architecture construction company. Okay. I'm right. Very specific. Okay. So the economy at the beginning stages would be, let's say we don't have the land. Okay. The economy for me would be to bring in uh, four or five other people that we pull on collaborate with that are really fit in like glove. We, we work through our traumas and all other bullshit that can keep us from uh, spreading our wings. Yeah. And, 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 and bullying each other. So we work, we have to work through that stuff first. So we're light, we are active and we are, uh, and I don't mean it in etheric terms. I mean it in really like we shed our baggage so we can like mm -hmm. go. For it, you know what I mean? We have some basic understanding on 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 those speaks things we spoke about, and we've got some basic uh, work through psychological through some bullshit that can keep us away. So let's say we got 
hypothetically that group of people then we can and so one of the people in that group can come in with some money okay and says okay guys I, i've got the money but I, I i can't do and i can see that you can do and i trust you and let's and we, we're forming like a, a, a four or eight i don't know how your system works but a small group of people that come together and say cool let's build two homes something as small mm -hmm. as that let's build two homes the one home, mm -hmm. for example, can go straight back to the person who put in the $300, plus they get a citizenship with that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so they have a home and they have a, a thing and they have a certain share in the business. Let's, I don't know, 10, 15, I don't know, you know, whatever. So they have a small share mm -hmm. in the business. So not only they've got the home and citizenship, they also have a way of making income if the startup works out. Uh, and mm -hmm. now the startup has already built two homes, a second home, for example, gets um, it could be a, a communal home that people can at least use as a kitchen. Like for example, the second thing could be this uh, uh, this uh, greenhouse idea. Okay, which mm -hmm. like you grow food. You have a place you can to take a shit. You have a place where mm -hmm. you can have a shower, and you have a place where you can cook food and maybe a little swimming pool. Um, a, a swimming pool that, for example, that you can start training even in cold climate. So I'm going to be very specific. It's a design I'm working on. It could be one of these little units. It, mm -hmm. it could be, but even to, to simplify, it could be um, one of these units, okay? <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, or one of these units was a geodesic dome, okay? So it has like two rooms. It has a composter. It has a pool to swim. The pool doesn't have to be a swimming pool. It could be aquaculture. I'll repeat mm -hmm. what aquaculture again because straight away we're starting to grow what fucking expensive crabs uh for <laughs> fucking expensive crabs for restaurants okay like those ones from australia with blue legs uh, it's a okay. position obviously not for vegetarians but wherever <laughs> we're starting to grow fucking expensive crabs and the aquaculture starts growing us uh herbs uh, mm -hmm. microgreens and herbs which are for, first of all for our consumption second of all excess for sale that's a possibility um, now that needs to be obviously elaborated further we could make money with by having crab sales that we can generate more cash or somebody else comes in and says hey guys I like what you're doing I can see you forming a nice team you, I can see that you promised and you delivered by building a home for another member okay I want a home as well. Here's my 300 mm -hmm. grand. He pays in 300 grand. He gets, let's say, 5%, 10% share in the business. I'm just hypothetically speaking. Sure. He gets yeah. a home. We have a second uh, uh, 150. We have a half of it goes for his home. Half of it goes into the business. Yeah. So with that $150,000, we have another home you know, made up, for mm -hmm. example. We make a restaurant. Okay, on our land or conference center or uh, a, 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 a space for yoga or multifunctional space that, mm. for example, now obviously has a greenhouse. Now we can invite people to now it could be a restaurant. Obviously, it depends where we are. If we're close to the city, right. the restaurant. Mm. If we're far out, it could be a second aquaculture unit or or a beekeeping guy. We decide that we, hey, we want to invest into a beekeeping story. So we, we invest into maybe those Cal Earth domes that are very, very, very cheap. $150,000 could build a whole mm -hmm. village of these. Okay. So with 150 grand, we go up, we, we maybe decide that we're going to uh, either get, a, I don't know, rent a 3D printer or we do Hyper Adobe. Or if we're really tight for cash, we can build 10 volts. Uh, 10 volts fast, either these mm -hmm. types of volts or remember timber is super cheap in Russia, super, super cheap in Russia. We can build um, the arch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, we can build um, this thing. We can build mm. this thing or we can build this thing, uh, uh, like five of them, okay, for 150 mm -hmm. and Now we're starting a rental money, okay? Uh, we're still up living probably ourselves in yurts at that stage, okay? Right. But we are renting these units. From the rent of this place, now we can go to the bank and take credit, one option, or we can get an investor because now he sees a possibility. Now we get a big income, a big, big chunk of money because it's already a working business. 
then we build a six, seventh, eighth, nine, ten. So now we've got a whole another ten of them. Now mm -hmm. then the rentals, we could sell five of them. That the rent a sale of five of them gives us another million dollars. I'm just hypothetically speaking. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah. or if we're selling them cheap, let's say for 50 grand each, okay, 50,000, very cool, nice, boom. Uh, we get another 250 grand. With 250 grand, that's an option with no investor. Okay, then we start, mm. you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're right on it. And, um, you know, it's definitely, there's a lot of people looking for it. So the the situation is, at the moment, there are people that are struggling. They're going to lose their homes. There are people in the elderly age. They're busy being treated terribly. And, you know, and then you got... Also, you know, parents that are worried about their kids, right? Like, what about wh which school and, and, you know, what the whole school system is also up to question. So you have people that want to move. They want to move out of Canada. They want to move out of the States in some places. Um, there's lots of places in Europe. They want to get out of England. They want to get out of, you know, those, those um, countries, uh, France, you know, uh, Holland. And they're losing their stuff. So... Part of this is trying to reach out to those people that are going to lose it all, show them how they don't have to lose it all. They yes. can actually push back to that system. So there's a legal aspect here where... What do you mean we, by pushing we, back into the system? So basically, like, you prevent the banks from just taking over and claiming property okay. because that's okay. what they do, Mark, right? Uh, that's a one thing I think I disagree. Let me understand it correctly because it's very important. What you're saying is, is that a whole community of people come together and they start uh, uh, telling the system that's busy failing, that's designed to fail, that's running by fascists, literally fascists that slaughtered 30 million right, right. people alone through 80 years, 75 years ago, and they're having a war on Russia again. Yeah. yeah. You're basically saying that you're going to go and try and as a community, tell those people, give them a finger and say, stop doing that. I think no, 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 that's not possible. No, no, what I'm possible. saying is those no, people yeah. need to reach out. Can I chime in? We have to reach out to those people and say, guys, you have a home that you can sell right now for 300 grand, okay, or and pay off your debt and walk out with 150, okay, right? Invest into this venture. That's, that's it, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, so what I mean by pushback is I mean that uh, the government is encroaching on them. And just by preventing the government and the banks from doing what they're doing, we're pushing back just by not participating, right? Yes. So if you're in a foreclosure, if, you, if your home is in a foreclosure, there are ways to get you out of that foreclosure, get you to sell the house over to someone else. You can pull your equity out. You can pull the value of the house out. And then you can invest it into a future where as you get old, you're going to be involved with these people that are going to, you know, take you into a longer age and if you can imagine like where where do you want to be when you're in your age and you need help we all as we get old to get to a point where we need help and you know would you want to be around strangers or do you want to start investing now in a community where you can actually get to know the people that are going to help you you know help them with their raising their children right because this connection between the elderly and the youth is disconnected and so you again, could actually help again, again we have to look at that phrase because it's a very uh, cushy phrase and it sounds very good. But when you start realizing how uh, fucked up some of our elders are with oh, their right. beliefs, yeah, yeah. beliefs, programs and stuff, and they're going to push that shit onto my child. No, thanks. No, thanks. Yeah, I'm of course. Have my child <laughs> watching a, a program I chose, I chose on YouTube that he can develop, then go to an elder that's going to tell him, all freaking uh, stuff, fear-driven bullshit, which is also a possibility. So we also got to work with that, but carry on. Yeah, yeah, but it's just the, the, the reality is that uh, in our life cycles, right, we're all going to get old. And, you know, we, we, regardless of the people being good or bad, basically there's this connection between wisdom of, the, you know, people that have lived longer yes. than people yes. that haven't. So just connecting that. And on the, the assumption of goodwill, right? So, I mean, basically, we are trying to find people that want to look for a better life and they want to live in a better community. They want to live where they can trust other people. And so, yeah, so the, the, choosing the right people is probably one of the hardest things to do and one of the most important things to do. But we have... We have a way to do that. And when we are starting to do small, that's why using small projects, you get to see 
the real deal just because you get to see who's yeah. actually you know sitting in the back doing nothing you don't have to invest too much so but, if they're but the not good news Mark, the good news with this property development and that hexagonal uh you know that whole uh, uh, moroccan carpet pattern that i've shown mm. you there could be people eventually that we're just selling off and they're getting their 25 by 25 meters we're building them a home and they're like they don't have to participate that's the difference between our town and eco community if they don't want to come and do communal uh, do things or participate in any businesses and just live in their 25 by 25 mm -hmm. meter home they can mm -hmm. they can yeah or well, yeah. they want to buy a flat in our um, high rise, six story high rise with a little garden uh, balcony or in a little greenhouse, or if it's in Mexico without the greenhouse, the balcony full of go a garden, like I showing you, they can. Maybe, yeah. maybe the people that the the, the 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 that's why it's called a property development project. Yeah, it's a conscious property development. Those that want to collaborate. You're welcome. Uh, beekeeping, whatever, making clay. Here we go. Because remember the three things that I mentioned, and maybe this you could mention some more. Uh, manufacturing. So we've got to manufacture something non-toxic. It could be uh, 3D printed houses. It could be whatever. Okay. Ecotourism. Yeah. Because ecotourism will work with manufacturing. People will want to see what you manufacture. You can make a whole thing around it, like honey or or. Uh, or for, or flax uh, clothes from flaxseed or hemp clothing, uh, hemp manufacturing from whatever you know what I mean. Now the ecotourism mm -hmm. is around it, and of course the healing. So it's the yoga studios, it's the mm, retreats, it's wherever else, and maybe you have something else you want to add. Whatever it could be, it's so. It, even I'm just getting ideas. I'm brainstorming with you. even those people who just bought in and don't want to do a fucking thing with the community eventually will i get bored watching tv see all these cool little projects starting to mm -hmm. rise up and things starting to happen and they're like hey how can i how can i participate and we have a really good uh, at that time for example if all goes well we have a really good structure that people can just easily plug in with the uh, interest and strength interest and strength what they're good at and what they want to do and what they love doing. And they can easily plug in because we have some app developed. I'm just coming with this app. Maybe I'm pulling this from your brain. I don't know. Maybe I'm pulling <laughs> this from the Lord. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The bottom line, we have a good app for people to plug in. When they're tired on their ass watching fucking TV, they switch on an app and say, oh shit, there is a, there, there is a, there is a, a skill needed. And I'm like, I'm an engineer. And there is a, 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 I don't know, there's, you know, you know what I mean? There's an easy yeah, way yeah. again. <clears throat> they so, see, they see solutions. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's, and that's the key thing is to find, you know, when someone gets an inspiration, they get creative to support them in that and then drive through because at some stage they're going to lack some skills, you know? And so, you know, not everybody knows everything. And so it really takes a kind of, a diversification between different people to be able to complete the project in its entirety. I wanted to show you a couple of projects here in the area that I'm living. Um, I could show you on the share the screen quickly. Um, let's quickly see. Uh, share screen. Let me just do uh, desktop. Okay, yeah, let me do that. And then I don't know if this sound share sound. I guess maybe. Okay. Um, so. This is one of the actual uh, projects I'm working on is a relocation program. And so in this program, there's a residential. Let me just show. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Wow. Uh, let's see. Well, hang on a second. I'm going to show you. So we have basically there's that? a couple of communi communities in um, in this area. I, we have Nick Loom is a good example of what you're talking about, but they they're struggling to, you know, it's a balance, right? So they, there's already a, quite a small community here um, that's doing similar to what we're talking about, but they don't have, they really don't have, it's more of a development, right? Than it is actually, uh, you know, a, a biospheric kind of lifestyle, right? So so there's, there's 
quite a few happening already naturally in this environment. And, amazing, um, amazing, love it. Yeah, which is which is really neat to see. So we have, and this one's also beautiful. They have, um, for instance, these guys. It looks like you're in, a, you know, you're living in a cave or something in some sense, right? Because it's all natural. And they, they, in other words, and they don't have a lot of budget, right? These guys don't have a lot of budget, but what brings them together is that they sing together once a week and they do stuff, small little projects Very together. Cool. They Airbnb, cool. they've got these natural um, kind of pools, the cenotes that they have. Um, and Amazing. they do stuff together, right? So the thing I wanna is- go, I wanna go there tomorrow. So they have, uh, so there's this, but what you're talking about is a, the initial start, right? And I think it's a good idea. For instance, this is a, a one that um, is quite popular now is the Green Dream um, Tulum. And so basically, let's see if I can get the, so they, they're selling properties and they, let's see if we can get the, and you start off with, you know, getting people to buy some properties and to build so because you need to have the money come in right yes. but those are what can i say they are the beginning it's a, it's a it's once you get to a point where you don't need that money and you're busy producing and selling things you can slow down on selling the properties and you can start to now look at more how do we build places that are beneficial for the community you know like you can build your little house somewhere and so that's just an example there. There's another one. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're not, um, you're not owning it out and you can't change the concept. You know what I mean? Because the problem, the problem with selling total title to someone else is that they can come in now, they can basically break the project apart in your, in your property. So you want to you know, make sure that they're not going to do that. They come buy in, but they're not going to go redevelop that property into something entirely different. Yeah, but they only get a 25 meters and the house yes. uh, and, the, and we, we, our construction company builds for them. So we make sure we control the types of buildings that go up because God forbid okay. they put a pink house, a pink square freaking dildo house uh, in the middle of our, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, that's no. how we protect it. And if they want to sell it, they're welcome to. I'll show you this. So, Cuyave. This is. Has sentido la libertad de respirar aire limpio cada mañana, de conectar con tus alimentos, con tu tribu, con el entorno. Puedes percibir el flujo de la vida. Puedes conectar con cada sensación de libertad que it's está inspirada. To me, it's la libertad es todo aquello que nos hace. Because it's I don't know if anybody understands Spanish, but to me they it, they're attracting a lot of the hippie kind of crowd. But these are kind of the yuppies, right? And it's fine. Like I mean, what at, at the end of the day, people are looking for a different kind of lifestyle. Yeah, that's what it is. So they're starting off with a business model, but eventually they move into kind of neighborhoods. You turn it into something, but you do need that economic economy you need to bring money in this is a very popular thing the temis goals you know um, and doing kind of natural so so yeah so that's happening over here in this area and um you know it's it's not gonna if it, it, it's happening and no one's gonna stop it right you're either gonna get on board or you're gonna miss out in that sense mexico because is very good mexico is very good because you don't have like restrictions like in america but america is so close yeah, America's got a lot of um, you know challenges as far as they, they control everything in the states, right? Where Mexico is still kind of they they behind on the times in that sense, right? Amazing. But don't think what Mexico is going to be incredible. I love it. Everything you show me, I love it. I, I want to go to Mexico. I, I I've been. Twice. Yeah, this is it's affordable. Yeah, you know um, the thing is the it's flat. Right. So the first thing is that you don't have to spend a lot of money on getting to water, right? To build a well costs you like less than five hundred dollars. You can build a you can get a well, drinking water. Nice. You nice. need to filter it. To put in um for instance communication, you can put alternative communication systems in and it's flat. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on major towers and any of that stuff. It's easy to build like, you know, a way to communicate a lot, you know, in that area, because when you go build these communities, like if it's a hundred hectares, you know, like you need a way of connecting people and they don't really have necessarily, unless you're using um, something like Starlink. So you can build infrastructure to communicate with other people easily. Um, 
it's just a lot more affordable than anywhere else I've been. If you're in Canada, it's a very uh, it's a very difficult place to basically start off. I don't know no, no, no. Canada, Canada, one. Canada is done. The yeah. two million uh, hardcore fascists were imported into Canada straight after World War II. The people that were slaughtering other people and burning uh, them, they, they they all moved to Canada. So Canada is done. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. That's um, basically what we, you know, we're going to come to see in the next, uh, I would say the next 50 years is that the States is going to take over in managing North America. But at the same time, um, you know, Mexico is aligned with India, China and Russia, right? So uh, because I don't know if you're aware of the BRICS. Of course you, I'm you aware. Heard of them. Yeah, so basically the thing is Mexico is now in contention with the states and they, for the last hundred years in mexico they had a uh, kind of like a um, limitation in manufacturing because anything that was manufactured or built in mexico uh, a certain profit of that had to go towards europe and the states because Why? of spain and so on well there was a thing called the bucarelli agreement and so there was this understanding that basically any and they had to pay back for the damages of the war in the civil war that you know the states stole half of mexico so so this agreement is is now over and pretty the much this the is is starting to flourish yeah immediately we're starting to see there's a lot of and, and you got the backing of russia and china so we're seeing a lot of manufacture coming in we're seeing a lot of technological developments taking place in mexico and it's affordable right so the thing is right that I, it, I'm it, in. it meets I'm in. all the parts right so if anybody wants to start up what we spoke with mark <laughs> guys reach out because it's either mexico and it, it not either it will be in mexico and russia but i'm getting russia's yeah, Russia's got a lot of opportunity as well. It's a tough place, though. That's the difference, right? Russia's yeah, I want to do it in the tough. south of Russia, so it's uh, the climate is gentle. I'm looking for land in the Caucasian mountains, but I'm ready to jump into Mexico tomorrow. Uh, really, uh, that that fast. Uh, well, we have I have 150 hectares we need to start to developing, but it's in the middle of nowhere. So if you know if you're keen on going there, we can get a team and we can start to you know cut out and start building there. You know we have the land, so that's not the problem. But in the middle so, of nowhere means it's like not such beautiful forest, or, or you know. You middle know. of nowhere means it's pretty far away from anything that's it's you're you're alone. Like there is no, um, you know, there's a little small little town over there that um, have you know like uh, maybe about maybe let, about three thousand people that are living close by, but otherwise. Know, let, let's talk about that project separately. We first need to check the land. We need to check where yeah. where, where it is. Uh, how far and uh, and there's many 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 things that need yeah to yeah we don't it's need to jam this conversation because I want to put this out on YouTube so we can start gathering people um, and I'll put a, I'll put a link and your link uh, as well uh, I've got a Telegram group uh, for people who want to join uh, 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 who watched until the end and want to participate with either time or money. And you have to introduce yourself to this Telegram group. Um, and here is the link. But if you are not, if you just want to hear when this thing comes together and you'll invest only then, when it's all built and ready for you, then you have to join to another link, uh, my bar architecture group. So we have, you know what I mean? So we get people who are ready to work on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Whether Mexico yeah. or Russia, but we have to have people who are willing to put in the time because that's, we can't do it together. We need people who are willing to put in the mm -hmm. energy now. And that's what I'm trying to gain. Not trying. This is what I'm working on. Getting the mm -hmm. team. I have 19 people who joined the group and uh, they're all there and introduced themselves and willing to put in the time. So I'm adding you to that group as well. And let's, let's, let's do a mastermind. Let's get us together and let's see what we can do in our locals. You know. Awesome. Awesome. Mark, we'll do another call soon. Thank you so much for sharing this Mexican stuff. It's truly inspiring. It's exactly what I spoke of, but on a small scale, it's exactly how it starts. Yeah. Yeah. No, and the people are doing it. So now's the time. It's uh, 
it, you know, you don't want to get locked into your little city and you can't sell your property because they're going to take it anyway. They're going to take your house. They're going to take it away from you anyway. And you're going to be happy about it. That's what he yeah, said. Exactly. Right? So, and you know what I like about Mexico? First of all, it's going to be an easier jump for Canadians and uh, the, 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 the the visas and all of that is very e much easier than in Russia. They're very strict with this thing, obviously, especially now. Um, and it's warm. And because it's warm, much cheaper, much simpler housing can be built for much, 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 much less money than in, in Russia because, you know, it's a different climate zone. Yeah. You know what I mean, what works there will, will not work here. So... Yeah let's uh, let's i'm open to all possibilities and all opportunities but we're looking for a team and we're looking for people who want to put in the money yeah yeah let's do it we got to create the creative leaders that's uh, really what we got to develop is creative leaders hey thank you for your time Oshla. i really appreciate it uh, thank and you, uh, really feel time. we feel uh yeah no and let's um, see if our I'm... videos will work to just chime in and say goodbye here we, there go. we go there you are Thanks for sharing. And you know, you got a big heart, man. Like you really like just laid out there and I really appreciate, it. I know divorce is not easy. I've gone through it myself. And um, what I can say is that to grow new, better fruits and trees, you need to burn the forest, you know? So sometimes yeah, you gotta let it go. Burn the old, exactly what right. wasn't serving and it wasn't serving. So yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Look forward to chatting again. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like we together, we're already forming a team. That's what I felt tonight happen because I can't do this alone. And, no, you shouldn't. No. And you can't do this alone either. No. And no. so a, a, a first, a first connection was made and I feel it's a strong connection. And I feel like looking, looking at you and connections, I, I feel like you have a very um, clean uh, intent that you're truly wanting to create an alternative um towns villages wherever there are where are going to be good for people to live in and my intent is from the bottom of my heart is the same yeah so that's yeah. what aligned us and we are inviting other awesome. people who are gonna accelerate this further that's right yeah please now's the time guys all right thank you <laughs> i hope thank you